Hi, welcome back to another episode of RCX Unwrapped. Uh, we read a lot in July. You can't see it, but there are stacks. So. Stacks on stacks on stacks. Like four. <laughs> um, and Todd is here today, too. And you can't see him. Oh, you can. <laughs> Look at that. You might see a kitty butt today, which everybody wants. Oh, right. Anna wants him. This is so special. Oh, I don't grunt. All right. All right, let's get started. started. Uh, where should we start? We should start with youth group. Youth group. We both read this one. Okay. So oh. youth group by Jordan Morris and art by Bowen McCurdy was amazing. I was highly anticipated for the both of us. <laughs> I know I was counting down the days. Yeah. So. Um, so basically you're in a youth group, but you also fight demons. So that's pretty cool. And it kind of wasn't what I was expecting, but it was what I was expecting at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the art is really, really pretty. That's why I was looking forward to it, because Bowen is very talented. I've never read Jordan. Have you read Bumble, Bubble, Bubble by Jordan? Bubble? I don't think so. I don't think, I haven't either. But I will now, because this yes. was great. Yes. This was great. Very good. Um, I read Far Sector in the DC Compact Edition. I don't read a lot of sci-fi, even though I claim it's my favorite genre. I normally claim it's my favorite genre because of Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> totally. But this was a phenomenal sci-fi. Um, and yeah, I just It's my favorite sci-fi ever. It's very good. It is very, 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 very good. And it's in the Easy Compact Edition, so it's only $10. You can buy it from Richmond Comics. Well, the pictures are so tiny. Yes, it is tiny. Um, I'm probably ruining my eyes reading it, but... The words aren't much smaller than the original version, but I feel like the pictures are, which the pictures. makes no sense in my brain. Exactly. Just shrink it all down. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Slam Romance, Major League Hotties. So this is book two in the Grand Slam Romance series. So I think there's going to be three. Oh, that's exciting. It's by Ollie Hicks and... Emma Osterholz, and in this episode, issue, volume, whatever, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> they go to Europe to get their Magical Girl license so they can play in Magical Girl softball leagues, and there's a lot of sex and hijinks and ridiculousness, mm -hmm. so if that's your thing. It's so good. <laughs> I didn't read, the, I haven't read the second one yet, but I loved the first one. I think this one's probably more ridiculous. <gasps> I'm so excited. <laughs> more ridiculous and then the ending was chef's kiss chef's kiss a little bit of a pivot <laughs> i read uh grass which is extremely heavy and it's it's a lot um so it's by cam suck gendry camps i'm not 100 percent sure on that but it was very good the art is really pretty um even though it's like all black and white i kind of like how they use the negative space um and yeah, it's about a lot of things. It's, I don't know how to explain it in a way that is like, does it justice, you know? It's one because of it's books. a lot. Is it um, fiction or based on her experience? I, it is based on someone's experience, yes. Um, and yeah, so it's very good. I highly recommend, but you have to know what you're getting into first. You can so. read it for Women in Translation Month because it's translated from mm -hmm. Korean? I think. <laughs> I think maybe I anyway you, it doesn't matter you can read it for women in translation month it's very good featured uh, again yes i finally read this this month and i mean i can't say anything that jacqueline hasn't already said but i thoroughly enjoyed it and i, I thought it was adorable and i loved it yeah we talked about this over and over because it's worth talking about yes um, it's on our summer must read list. So, yes. and you could read it for disability pride month, which mm -hmm. was July. Yep. I think you read this for book bingo. Oh, we did. I did yeah, do that. We did book bingo. I mean, our tic-tac-toe this month. And so mm -hmm. this is by a Palestinian creator. What's their name? Maysoon Zaid. Yes. She is a Palestinian author. Mm -hmm. And then Shadia Amin is... I don't want to say it wrong. 
I met her and I'm Colombian. She's Colombian. Mm -hmm. Yes, very, very good. And she's a wonderful person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So recommend reading that book. Yes. <laughs> Doodles from the Boogie Down by Stephanie Rodriguez. I read this month because I was trying to beat Tess at Book Book Tech <laughs> And I don't remember what the prompt was. I think it was Latinx creator. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But this is based on the author's own experience where she's in middle school looking to apply for art schools for high school. Mm -hmm. And she has a mentor her art teacher becomes her mentor and she takes her around the city of new york and shows her that there's art everywhere and i just i really like the message of like there's art literally everywhere you look it doesn't have to be at an art museum it's it could be anywhere so i really like that and the art style i've heard people complain about but i thought fit the story really really well sometimes a simpler like yeah. art style can fit and it's for kids you have exactly. to remember that Kids books are for kids too. And who wrote it? Stephanie Rodriguez. Stephanie, you already said that. Stephanie Rodriguez. Yeah. So, and she said in the back that it is based on her experience. It's not like a memoir, but she also included pictures of herself and stuff in the end. And I, I love stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I read this super cute manga called uh, Breath of Flowers, Volume One and Two by Callie. Um, so it's about this girl and she falls in love with a guy on the basketball team but it turns out the guy is actually a girl pretending to be a guy so that she can play on the basketball team and, and you know they fall in love and it's it's adorable i yeah it's really good it's got a lot of like stuff about friendship and whatnot and i love that the it was just a good manga you know there's it's really cute. So. Manga is just so hit or miss for me. Yes. <laughs> yes, I understand. But this is really cute. I think you would like it. I probably would. I like the cute stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's course. very low stakes. Not so sad. That's, so it's not sad at all, no. <laughs> yeah, and that's... <laughs> um, Slip. I read this, like, yesterday, and it was so good. So, so good. What's the main character's name? Jade? Jade. Uh, so it's about Jade who goes off to the summer camp after her best friend has been admitted to the hospital. And so it's kind of about her trying to enjoy camp, but also the worry of her friend and her friend not doing well. Um, I found it very relatable. <laughs> I like the monochrome yes. color palette. And then you have like little bits of the color when the creations of her clay would come to life mm -hmm. so that was really well done yes do you remember what slip meant it's like part of the clay process. it's part of the clay process do yeah um <laughs> i don't remember i wrote it in my review many moons ago when i read it but i didn't know if you remembered it's maybe the process of making sure it all <laughs> anyway comes together that's what slip means but it's about clay Oh, when they sent me this book, they sent me a piece of clay and I made a watch and call out of it. Really? Yes. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so after reading this, it makes you want to make clay. Yes, I it's... wanted to go and create things. <laughs> yeah. Make your creations come to life, too. Yes. <laughs> I've read a lot of books this month that have made me really want to, like, do things. Do things. This is Mish the Bad Demon, book two, The Secret of the Thing by Michelle Lamb. And so in book one, Mish is considered a bad demon because she's not good at it. Not that she's a bad person. And she becomes the guardian over her town. And then she feels like she's not good at that either. And so all this bad stuff is happening to the town and she has to figure out how to fix it. And basically the towns come together and make that happen. So this is a really nice story too. I'm excited to read it. I loved the first one. And um, the art is just... It's perfect. Oh, it's horrible. These little demon fairies have horns and wings. Oh. <laughs> so cute. I love it. So cute. Oh my goodness. Um, the other manga I read this month was After We Gazed at the Starry Sky. Um, it was 
<laughs> I can't just say, oh my God, it was really good. But it was really good. I love <laughs> books with like a focus in outer space and whatnot. So it's about our main character. His name is... Japanese name that I'm not 100% sure of um and so he is disabled our main character is disabled he's in a wheelchair and so I read it to for the tic-tac-toe so I trying can to beat me trying to beat Jacqueline yes she tried. <laughs> I failed <laughs> um and yeah it's it's really cute and that mm -hmm. does he travel to outer space he does not travel to outer space no it's he travels to like a some sort of art convention of sorts or like a space station of some sorts um where you look at the stars and he meets this guy who's taken a lot of pictures that he really enjoys um and yeah they fall in love Aww. obviously is it a one shot it is a one shot yes so it's the best very very adorable highly recommend Ready or Not by Andy Poretta is a coming of age graphic novel. Um, Andy, no, that's the creator's name. Sorry. Cassie and her friends just graduated high school and they're all going off to different schools or getting different jobs. Um, so she wants to spend one last summer with them before they go off to college and they're kind of doing their own thing, so it's kind of sad. But then she's like, let's play this game that we used to play when we were kids. And so that's kind of how they get to hang out again and make memories before they go off to college. So ready or not, things are changing. And it's basically like one last hoorah in New York City before everything changes. And so it hits you right in the feels. And there's some hope in there. You know, friendships change, and that's okay. Yeah. I'm excited to read that one, too. The best part, though, I think I asked Tommy about this, is the group chat is color-coded, and so everyone is assigned a color, so you know who's who, who when they're talking to each other. And I asked Philip, I was like, what color would I be? And he said green, of course. Yeah. And I was like, because he would be blue, so what color would Tommy be? And we were trying to figure it out in our Tommy group chat. Tommy would be orange. <laughs> I just was like, I think it's interesting to assign people a color. Mm -hmm. I would be yellow. And it was just, you didn't have to, like, go back and see who was talking. It was just based on the color. Mm -hmm. So it was very colorful and just a beautiful book. Yes. Um, I read, or uh, Jacqueline and I both read Lucky Cap Scouts, which is this tiny little uh, silver sprocket one shot. It's Oh, Stevens, I think. Yes. Yes, um, it's super cute. I also bought like the thing that came with it stickers? where you cut out, they weren't stickers, oh. they were little stand up guys. Oh. You cut them out and you can stand up. So I Is have them. Is that stickers inside? I think there are also stickers. Oh, there are stickers in the back. Yes, so they're stickers. It's very, very cute. Um, just the little gumball machine guys come to life. Uh huh. I mean, we'll get some more adorable, and they all have different personalities, so mm -hmm. it's just really fun. Yeah. So Lucky Cat. Is that what those are called? I just call them gumball machines. Oh, but Lucky Cats. Very adorable. <laughs> and then I read uh, Skin Deep by Flo Woolley. Um, it was very good. I feel like my complaint is short stories are too short. So that's not really even a valid concern. And so <laughs> um, it's kind of like a queer horror romance. Um, um in like a dance house of sorts and just like the pyramid of sorts that people put dancers on and trying to be the best and whatnot. I still need to read that one. It's pretty good. I love the art. It's all very green. So my color's green. Navigating with You by Jeremy Whitley and Cassio Ribeiro and Nikki Fox Robot. Yes! Uh, this was super cute! <laughs> uh, so one of our main characters' name is Nisha, and she is disabled, um, and she meets this wonderful girl named Gabby, who has just moved into town, and they, Nisha doesn't like her at first, so it's a little bit enemies to lovers, but they come around really, really fast, um, and they, they become best friends first, and they are on the hunt to find all 
the the whole series of a manga they both really enjoy so they spend the whole summer looking for that um so it's like a road trip yeah I mean, kind of like a road trip more of an adventure oh. and there are little bits of the, like the manga throughout oh that's cool and it's in mm -hmm. black and white yep so it's here's very the, here's good the manga pages mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's very good it's a little bit sad um it takes place in north carolina where jeremy's from Hopefully we can get him out to the store one day because oh that would be so fun. We talked to him at one of the cons and he said he would. <laughs> so he has to. I can't wait to read this. Mm -hmm. The land of Afronia. So the Afro unicorns have made their first book appearance, as far as I know, the first graphic novel appearance, I guess. And this is by created by April Showers, and she created. The Afro unicorns, so little brown and black girls can see themselves as unicorns, and I think that's just the best thing ever. And the art was just adorable. And so when you come of age, you get your little crown, and they were trying to figure out why someone would steal one of the magical crowns, so they have to bring it back to the palace. And it was a great children's book. Highly recommend. <laughs> Very cute. Very cute. Fence is ah! continuing. This was highly anticipated because you never get enough in those tiny little volumes of mm -hmm. the store. Mm -hmm. So Fence Challenger's Long Shot, number one, but I think it's by itself, um, by C.S. Picot and Joanna the Mad. And you basically are just built up to their state tournament. Finally. And it just leaves you there before they even compete oh my god <laughs> and says to be continued in finch challenger sweet 16 2025 and i'm not okay with that nope uh um -uh. it's like the slowest of slow burns you it is can't so slow <laughs> i think they hold hands in like the fifth volume and so <laughs> they hold hands in this one too and i'm just like oh everyone see uh -huh. look look but they're not going on a date. They're only having a meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like fencing, pick up this series because mm -hmm. it's just a lot of fun. And you actually learn a lot about fencing during the process, which I think is really cool. But it is a very slow burn on the romance part. But like the friendships and everything else is really great. It's worth it. Yes, it is worth it. Um, so I've been kind of like going through all of the uh, Robin and Batman books at the store, um, and this one was my favorite. Um, it's right after Bruce has adopted Damien, and I mean, it's a typical little story. Like, there's nothing extreme about it, but my favorite part was Bruce goes off to like save the world or something, but he leaves Damien with the other like soon to be teen titans <laughs> um and they go on their own little adventures which i just thought was absolutely amazing and really i just want to read about the robins which is why i picked it up but the art is super pretty and it's by jeff lemire who has done lots of things um yeah it was really sweet. very distinctive it was very very good mm -hmm. i thoroughly enjoyed I have Abbott 1979 by Saladin Ahmed and who's the artist? Sammy Cavilla. Kev I think that's a new artist for this volume, but this takes place. This is the third volume. It takes place three years after the previous volume. So Elena Abbott has defeated the. I keep wanting to say Kumandra, but it's the Umbra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Umbra. <laughs> Not the Kumandra, the Umbra, which is like a demon. And the demon killed her husband and now has her girlfriend trapped. So she has to defeat the Umbra once and for all. And I just love Elena because she's a badass. Mm -hmm. And it takes place in the 70s. So seeing a black woman badass in the 70s just makes me feel good. Yes, I'm very excited to read it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think the art is different, but... I don't know. It's beautiful still. It's gorgeous. This is her fighting the Umbra. I definitely recommend it. And she's a reporter. A tabloid reporter. Mm -hmm. And she finally gets uh, recognized as that, I think, in this one. As she nice. deserves. Very good. 
I read both uh, Poison Ivy, The Virtuous Cycle, and Poison Ivy, Unethical Consumption. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I, oh, gosh, it's, I'm not very good at explaining things, but um, yeah, I like the focus on like the world and like healing it and not really caring about other people. I kind of like that about Poison Ivy, how <laughs> she just is <laughs> more focused on the world rather than the people that live in it. Um, but plants. not like in a bad way. Yeah. Her plants um, and just like connecting with your roots for lack of a better term. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was very, very good. I finally read Hot Girl after Philip Antes told me I need Very to. Good. And this is by Jadzia Axelrod. And they also wrote Galaxy. So, so good. Galaxy makes an appearance, of course. And like Tess said last month, it's just full of lots of lesbians. So many lesbians. And I just, I know about Hot Girl, but getting like more of her origin and then how she's come to be the hot girl that we know and love i really enjoyed that and the teamwork between her and galaxy was great it's mm -hmm. uh so i finally read age 16 which we talked about last month so there isn't much to say that jackman hasn't already said um but well i will say again i love the way the colors changes based on the time period mm -hmm. um but yeah, it was a really good, I think I teared up a little bit. It was really very good. Definitely. So. It's nice to actually have the physical copy because I read a digital yes. copy. <laughs> yes. It feels good. It feels good and nice and heavy. Yes! I read Billionaire Island Volume 1 by Mark Russell and Steve Pugh. And oh my god, rich people are stupid with their money. And that's what this is about. <laughs> so they create this stupid island. And yeah, what can go wrong? Lots of things, I'm sure. Yeah. But, I mean, look at this freaking dog. Like, come on. Billionaire shouldn't exist, and this is why. Mm -hmm. If And if you like satire, Mark Russell is your man. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> like no, I love it. There's not much you need to say about that. It's, yeah. I only have the one, so. If you oh my go. gosh. What I happened? think I went too much too at much end. at a time at the time, but I mean we've read like the same amount of books. Yes. According to our list. Anyway. According to our list. <laughs> <laughs> I read Brittle Joints by Maria Sweeney and I want to read this is... one. A memoir based on her experience as a disabled woman. She has a very unique disability, and I don't want to say it wrong, Brooks syndrome, which is it's rare because it's like two rare conditions combined, so it's even more rare. And so she's sometimes she's in a wheelchair, sometimes she walks, so she goes through the experience of like, you don't look disabled and you're so lucky and all that, and the artwork is just amazing the pencils and the color and just the fact that she's sharing her experiences and i just love it just love it Damn. we need a more accessible world yes so highly recommend this just to open your eyes to that a little bit mm -hmm. and speaking of an accessible world we can talk about stars in our eyes. Stars in their eyes by Jessica Walton and Ashka. This so good. took me back to my first experience at a con because that's kind of what this is for Maisie. She goes to fan con to meet her idol and who also is a amputee. And she really wants to meet her idol, but it doesn't happen. But instead she meets Ollie who is awesome and they get to hang out together in the quiet rooms and go to panels and eat lots of snacks <laughs> <laughs> and it just my it's first adorable. con experience was so overwhelming but so amazing and it kind of reminded me of that time in my life but like being so young and like finding your first love at a mm -hmm. con was just so cute and special yes and yes. I love them I love it so much <laughs> 
Gamerville by Johnny Christmas, who is the creator of Swim Team. So automatically, I knew this was going to be amazing. And our main character, Max, yes, Max Lightning. He is a gamer, awesome. and he wants to go to the gaming competition called Gamerville. But his parents want him to get outside and experience the world, so they sign him up for Camp Reset. And so he's stuck going to camp, and the, of course you don't have any electronics or anything. And so the whole time he's at camp, he's trying to escape, which is literally across the lake, to get to Gamerville because he wants to compete. <laughs> and through all of that, he does make new friends, and he... Um, I don't want to spoil it, but like the friends and the parallels between the different types of summer experiences and how not one is superior than the other. It was just really well done. Um, and there's a tortoise. <gasps> Sold. R.I.P. Oh no! <laughs> I remember you telling me about that. The tortoise doesn't survive and I wish someone would have told me that. <laughs> but... It was really good, a really good camp experience story. Yeah, I'm excited to read that one too. Last two. So I read The Sculptor by Scott McCloud. It was the best thing that I read this month. Um, it may be one of the best things that I have read all year. Um, it, I knew it was good because Philip was like, you'll like this one. <laughs> um, it's a typical like, Ooh, deal with death sort of thing a guy sells like the rest of his life to have these ultimate sculpting powers for just 200 days um and it's about like making like what matters in the art universe and what will stand the test of time and how you can just churn out art however you please but does it mean anything and if it doesn't have a meaning or a story behind it it's not worth as much um and yeah he falls in love and it's really sad um <laughs> but it is really very good it made me want to sit down and like be creative in a way because after I read this I immediately read Scott uh Scott McCloud's other book um Understanding Comics which was very similar in a way um and both of them combined I was like wow I want to write a comic you know <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> so yeah highly highly recommend you didn't bring understanding comics with you I didn't I forgot that's my fault how dare you but this was probably my favorite so kind of funny we save them for the end brownstone by Samuel Tear and Mar Julia Tess read last month yes. I finally read I think at the in our video I was like I might read it by the end of the month while I lied I read it like at the beginning of this month <laughs> but again um oh my god I don't want to say her name Alumin Dina has to live with her dad for this summer and his brownstone and she ends up helping him fix it up and along the way she finds a little community family and all the people that stay at the brownstone kind of are a little family and found family is like the best the best trope there is so i love that the culture the language the full immersion experience that she got to have for this summer was amazing and just the art is beautiful mm -hmm. just so so good so so wonderful but yeah those might have been my favorite of the month yes highly recommend definitely mm -hmm. And that was it. We read a lot this we month. We did read a lot this month. I think we Go each us. read at least 16 books. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty good. Amazing. It was wow. the tic-tac-toe I needed to beat. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We should do that every month. We should. We should. That was a lot of fun. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like yes. and comment. Tell us what we need to improve on or and tell us what your favorite thing you read this month was please do please do okay, okay.